Those folks see revival, they're raising money. Right. <clears throat> they might be building church membership. It's the only reason why some churches do revival. Yeah, raise money. it's a, it's a, it's a money raising event and has nothing to do with souls being saved. And so, and then and you certainly don't think about uh, the folks that's in the church actually getting revived. You know, that's the, that's the whole thing to it. And so, by people not being taught right, the whole approach to God is wrong. And you know, they're doing it out of ignorance because what's the blind leading the blind? And in many instances, you got people who are doing it on purpose. And sometimes you got people doing it just out of ignorance because that's all they've been taught. Whereas you got folk that do know enough about what they really do, but they want to keep people as babies. If they get saved at all. You know, another thing <clears throat> about revivals is like they either use it for a fundraiser or, you know, a lot of the people who say they came there and actually received something, they shouted their curls out and sweated and fell out and stuff. Like they got their emotional rocks off. They got a, a, a good feeling, mm -hmm. no impartation. Mm -hmm. They didn't come away with anything. Mm -hmm. And then by Monday, you're just as empty as you were. You're you're just as empty spiritually as you were and hungry as you were before the revival. And now you got less money too. Yeah, yeah, you, you hit nail on the head, and that's that's how uh, my professor saw it. That's how he described. Because see, I sat back and just watched, and I didn't say anything. Hardly in class, you know, uh, it was. Uh, Alternative to incarceration was the course, but he's an ordained Baptist minister, and at the time was a pastor in Greensboro, and <clears throat> he still would talk about different aspects of the church. I guess the Holy Spirit though caused him to do that, and he, t you know, they were let's see, maybe the class wasn't a great big class, but it was enough. Did we take it in the spring or the summer? I can't really remember. But I think there may have been, I think you have to usually have a minimum of about 10 or 12 people to check out in a class, even during the regular session, mm -hmm. to have a class. And I think, I don't think there were no more than 15 of us in that class. really hard to remember than years ago. But if I can remember correctly, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> there may have only been Four black people in the class, maybe five. And but he seemed to talk about the church. He talked about the church from the by him having been trained um, in a Catholic seminary. But he also talked about the black church, and, and and the reference he made was in line with what you were saying, Jason. He was saying that those black people had to do something. Because of the stress of the racism, yeah, yeah, that's been something that like black intelligentsia has been saying since we got out of slavery. Mm -hmm. Like because the their attitude, they basically doing what white folk did uh, not too long after after the Dark Ages. It's like they they've been jaded by religion, and so their reaction to religion is like this intellectual stance, and they're trying to. Like they're trying to like belittle, like the legitimacy of uh, true expression of worship. Exactly, you know what I'm saying. Like they're trying to belittle it to just some emotional high that people need because of societal pressures and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, to a certain extent, and this is this is what's sad. To a certain extent, they are right. Because you do got some Negroes, they just want to dance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like it, it is true, but I think the problem is, is like whenever they try to, it's like, it's, it's what, what God says about the wisdom of the world. It's like whenever they try to take this like arrogant stance, like mm -hmm. they're going to look down on, you know what I'm saying, on, on, on having a relationship with God and look down on the reality of God. Like it's only whenever they try to belittle it, whenever they sound stupid, but I think that the I think that that argument in and of itself does have a place because people are uh, people are carnal. You know what I'm saying? Like you got like you, you know like you got the like Morris talks about a lot of times. He talks about the people 
know what I'm saying, who want goosebumps, goosebumps. And who want that good feeling, who assert, like they have a very superficial, uh, they have a very superficial look outlook on <laughs> Christianity, you know what I mean? Like they ain't, they ain't really going to try to get deep supernaturally, like, you know what I'm saying, they're just going just for the, you know what I'm saying, I think the same argument, especially like a, for the black church, could be made uh, with this whole social club thing they're turning into with the Freemasons. You know what I'm saying? It's like some of it, some of it is uh, my my fault. Did I cut you off? No, 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 no. I'm I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just it's just it's funny. I'm I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what he said. It made me think about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I know what you're saying. You're saying you got all these diversions exactly that that have become a part of what's going on. And because of, like you say, a real move of God is belittled. Right. Um, right. And I also was smiling. I was thinking about um, what happened when your mama went to go see your aunt in what her, her church. Considered high church. High church. Yeah. And what they were talking about was everybody was shouting to dance. And I know if you've been there, you would have been shouting to dance too. And high you, service we had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and, and like you say, say they, they go by that and see, I tell people, um, and welcome to the broadcast, by the way. Um, <laughs> I tell people, you know, shouting and dancing is fine. And there are times I do it. Um, I can't say percentage wise how much I do it. Um, the last time I danced, I got prayed for. What maybe what six seven weeks ago, and I wound up dancing in the back after getting prayer. But but I got touched. I got I got I got healing in my body. Um, there's nothing wrong with dancing when it's inspired by God, because it said that David danced for the Lord with all his might. But let's take it to the New Testament. It happened when the apostles prayed for a man that was sick. And he went leaping and praising God. And see, here's what trips me out. People will quote this in their church. But if they see folk doing it, they act like, well, uh, we're Baptists, we don't do that. Or we may be Pentecostal, but we're mm -hmm. sophisticated Pentecostal. Yeah. So then they want to take them to the back. Mm -hmm. Or take them into, into a study somewhere. And work with them. yeah 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 you know yeah, yeah you know and they they sitting there fanning them and doing all this other stuff there's no need for that stuff um, what people don't realize that's just one manifestation when it's real but in many cases I I can I can give you examples of people who uh, saw the real dancing but then they would mimic it well at Booker T. Um, those teenage girls. Oh yeah. What they would do is they would watch the women get out there. Cause man, sometimes Charles would get to preaching and the power of God falls. Brother Dale would preach. <clears throat> power of God would fall. And then women would get up and start dancing. <clears throat> they did it more than Brother Dale did. When Brother Dale did it, a lot of them they got excuse me. <clears throat> they started falling out on the power. But uh, I'm laughing because those teenage girls saw it. But I used to see two or three of them sometimes that would get together and you'll see them there were minute steps mm -hmm. of what they saw. Right. And, um, and what a lot of folk would do is, okay, they grow up in a Pentecostal church. Could you get, overall, you get more women do it than men. Yeah. Uh, and these girls, as they evolve into women, they do the same old stuff. The music gets to working up. Mm -hmm. The preacher gets to doing his cadence, and they up and they start dancing. Mm -hmm. They start dancing. I remember there was one uh, young woman. She was about my age when I was in my uh, mid twenties, and uh, preacher get to preaching. She would stand up and she rock. Mm -hmm. Did she point? Right. Point at the preacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. theatrics. I mean, you know, this yeah. is and this is the stuff that you see. Um, these are the theatrics, and um, 
I, you know, I look at this stuff, and you know, here I'm just sitting there looking. You know, um, Bob says, watch and pray. Literally. It means watch with the eyes God gave you. Watch. And if you're in the realm of the Spirit, you'll be able to discern, which means you'll be able to see into the Spirit realm, and you'll be able to judge by the Spirit. Whether what they're doing is of God or not. Cause lot, let's, let's face it, folk like get up, especially black folk, they love to get up and shout and dance. They're just like gyrations. That's that West African. That's what I was, I was about to say. That's one of the things they talk about, like in the academy, they talk about like um, the evolution of our music. Like they talk about how we came from West Africa, you know what I'm saying? And especially in the United States, they talk about New Orleans and they talk about Congo Square. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the rain shout, you know what I'm saying? And they try, <coughs> but, the, but the thing is, and this shows you, you know, how Folk who don't know the spirit of God, they can't discern from the spirit of God and, and all the other spirits. They try to say that the practices, that the worship practices that happen in the ring shout are the exact same that happen in the Pentecostal church. And, it's, uh, and I've noticed a lot of times whenever I talk with those kinds of people, I have to make that delineation. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, well, no, nah, no, nah, they weren't worshiping Yahweh whenever they were doing. That was probably traditional Orisha worship. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, and there's a mm -hmm. fundamental difference. Now, like what you said, it's important that you have discernment because demons make people fall out under the power. Mm -hmm. Demons can have people under the power, not not the power of the Holy Spirit. Demons can have folks speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All of all of like the gyrations and permutations of the uh, charismatic experience. Like it's it's very it's very important. I remember um, whenever I was studying in Azusa Street the Azusa Street Revival when I was in China, one of the things that like became really apparent to me was I was like, wait a second, man, like I definitely got to step my discernment game up because that was one of the things that was happening with Seymour. All of the manifestations that were happening at Azusa Street weren't Holy Spirit inspired. And uh, it was very important that the leadership was able to distinguish, you know what I'm saying, to be able to shut the wrong stuff down. Because you've said this all my life. You've always said, uh, these weirdos, they're going to come to your meeting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're coming. And it's like, and you got to be ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be ready to be able to, uh, to, you know what I'm saying, you know, to be able to mm -hmm. discern, to be able to sift the wheat from the chaff. Yeah, you do. You, you do because they'll show, well, look what happened when we went to that meeting years ago out there off. Longdale? Mm -hmm. who, was, who was speaking? Oh, wow. I can't really remember now. It was um, the guy, the people that we met down in, uh, oh, Lord, the Texan. And they were going to this meeting out here off, off Longdale. I can't remember the name of the church, but really the people that they were associated with were actually had a witchcraft spirit. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't discern it. Um, uh, we really have to, to keep ourselves sharp because a lot of stuff that's not of God will masquerade as God, and you know it'll be a it'll be a familiar spirit. Um, those people get surprised when you can look at them and you can discern and know that they're not not of God. That guy knew that I knew he wasn't right mm -hmm. um, because he was uneasy around me, and I guess I gave him the Jenny look probably. That's really yeah. I know you were ice girl. Yeah, you know so. Yeah, I did. The Jenny look is my mama's look. My mama's name, my mama's name, Virginia Taylor Drone. So, you know, Jenny for short. So, if I give folk the Jenny look, cause I, I, I'm just a more. I look somewhat like my dad. Look more like my mom. So, if I, I, I have a lot of ways like my mama. So, that's a certain look I give, which my daughter laughs because she said, "Dad is looking like Grandma Drone." So, um, you know, if if I can say something to that. Um, I'm glad you brought up the point, Q, about uh, like how demonic spirits can mimic. You know, you, yeah, can mimic as well. There's a video, just I guess semi-viral at least. Um, it's this dude in church, this young guy in church, um, and I think they're shouting. And dude is legit doing like martial arts moves. Right. I mean, it looked like he was doing like Tai Chi or something. Um, I mean, he's going through all the movements and stuff, 
with this very like vindictive smile on his face. Now, the moment the video started, I could feel the demon power coming off of it. And then I was immediately drawn to him. But then I'm looking at it. Everybody else, they look crazy too. They're not doing what he's doing, but he's legit just doing karate move, uh, martial arts movements. And I think he eventually moved out into the aisle and was doing it. Eventually, it was kind of like all eyes on him. Right. Yeah. Well, I looked at the comments of the initial person who posted the video, and there were lots of people where you don't know, you know, God uses people in many ways, and, you know, not all people praise God the same. And, and all these different things. And, you know, you can't judge that person because, you know, that's the way he chooses to praise God, which it's sad because immediately I was drawn back to that. These people can't discern yep. what's God and what's not. Yep. And I mean, he was completely out of order. Yeah. Amazing, all the way yeah. completely driven by a demonic spirit. I mean, the smile he had on his face. The demonic gleam. Exactly. And the, the smile, I mean, it told a thousand words. It was like this. This demon is like these people are so stupid. They don't even know I'm. I'm sitting right beside them, yeah. and I'm putting all this in the atmosphere, and they falling out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I think right after that, he just quietly sat down, just smiling. Yeah, that, that, yeah, done, done, done this dude. In other words, oh, he did, he did a con. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah. that's actually yeah, exactly yeah, what he yeah, did. Yeah, the and then people got mad. These church folk got mad coming. Mm -hmm. well, you can't judge that man, and that's the way he, you know, I think it's beautiful. Of course, you have no discernment. Yeah, you have no discernment. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really what the problem is people lack discernment. You know when you even say it to them, they look at you very puzzled. Because mm -hmm. they don't even know what you mean. And that's that's the interesting part about it is 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 that you know, I've often said these people don't know how God works. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when you have the knowledge and you start telling folk, folk a lot of times get angry yeah. because they've been in church for the last 35, 40 years and they find out they really don't know a fraction of what they thought they knew. Right. And so they're very, very upset. But it's, it's very, very important. You know, remember what Jesus said? He, he said, to the woman at the well, he said, don't worry about God being in the mountain. Because that's that was really the distinction between them and the Samaritans. Because they were the same bloodline. Right. But they got into a huff about where God was and how to serve it. And the problem is we've gotten away from the original template. We should be doing first century Christianity. There should have never been any deviation. Mm -hmm. But the devil got in it because the best way to mess something up is infiltrated. Mm -hmm. You can attack it from without, but you get within it. Okay. Now you conquer from within. You can divide and conquer. And people are finding out they just don't know as much as they thought. And here's what happens. Either you're going to humble yourself and say, okay, I found out I was wrong. But now you should be rejoicing. Because then you know you were wrong. Then you get it right. Yeah. You know, and, and if your heart is right, you got the right motivation. But a lot of them, they want a social club. Or they just want goosebumps. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so many people say, well, I ain't trying to go deep. Well, you're going to need some deepness. We, ain't, we don't do that spooky stuff. Yeah. Now, how are you going to be, how is the Holy Spirit going to be spooky? I mean, people make some really ludicrous statements. And, and really, I see how God has started this off because people have allowed their ignorance of the Word and the Spirit to cause them to err. Because they don't want to be associated with people who shout and dance. Right. Those who speak in tongues. But I got news for you. If you want God to move for you supernaturally, you have to deal with them folk. Whether you want to or not, because if you're sitting up trying to be cute, which a lot of people really are. I'm gonna say it like Elder McCoy used to say, make it plain. Mm -hmm. Uh if you're trying to be cute, you're in trouble. 
Because you're going to have to take things the way God wants them. Now, again, shouting and dancing, you don't do it all the time. Sometimes you do. <coughs> Sometimes you don't. Are you going to give me some of that tea, please? I mean, if you can, put some honey in. If there's no honey, <coughs> oh, sure. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. What I want people to understand is God's not mad with you because you've done things wrong in trying to serve Him. Because there's a lot of people who are sincere and they're hungry. Sincere and sincerely wrong. Yeah, they are sincerely wrong. Well, I found that out when I began to read the Bible. When I, when I remember when I got to <laughs> people who never thought about how you look. When God took me to Deuteronomy 22 and I read about the dress and I said, Lord, these people are sincere. But they're sincerely wrong. You're trying to make scripture and make a doctrine. And I tell people, well, there was no such thing as pants right. when Jesus was around. They all wore skirts. Or yep, they all. <laughs> Everybody wore robes. So, how's that going to apply? You know, I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up because, in reference to the um, the robes and the garments and stuff, um, I got a revelation on this about sometime last week or whatever. Um, how we, you know, we're talking about uh, the importance or whatever to, to wear certain garments or vestments, you know, in the clergy and the fivefold or whatever. And I still couldn't really put my finger on why I had such a disdain about it. Mm -hmm. You know, but then I look back further, you know, and just dealing with just general history, you know, going back, yes, there are some references to, you know, garments and stuff in the Bible, but mm -hmm. especially in the Western world, like the Protestant church, pretty much all of that, uh, as far as what we wear uh, ministerially, it all comes from Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the whole thing about it. Christianity has been so influenced. And I tell people, even if you're a Protestant, that Catholic influence is there. Right. Whether you recognize it or not, to see, it's how much God showed you the influence. And so my question, or the question the Holy Spirit posed to me when he was showing that to me is like, okay, you will even get some churches who say that they do not subscribe to the Catholic, Catholic ideology, yet the way they structure, they structure everything is Catholic, yeah. and specifically what they wear you know, it's Catholic, it's like, okay, if you have no affiliation to it, then number one, you're ignorant because you're not realizing, hey, the way you do all of this stuff ties straight back to it. I asked, a, uh, I got a friend of mine who goes to um, a local well-known church in High Point, and his bishop at that church is uh, the chief of protocol in their organization. And so... <laughs> They're at that specific church in High Point, they take order and stuff very, very seriously about how you dress and, you know, how people are addressed and making sure pro proper protocol is set before you approach the pulpit and all of that. Because he's the chief of protocol and he, he was just elevated to a bishop. Well, I was asking my friend about, you know, the vestments and stuff that they wear. And um, I said, well, listen, I'm like, you guys aren't Catholic, but... Everything that y'all are doing, the way you structure and every, the way you structure and set everything up, is Catholic. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Well, yeah, we don't subscribe to a lot of stuff they're doing, but I think they said they actually take their orders or how they structure everything directly from the Pope." Right. So why are you doing it? What are you, you're either doing or doing it, or you're not. You you know it. Why take any of it is what I'm saying. You know, why take any of it at all if you're not, if you're saying out of your mouth that you're not associated? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, again, 
Man yeah. wants to do what? Ritual form and ceremony. Right. Right. Instead of uh, true worship in, in spirit and in truth. And um, yeah. it's interesting how God does things because tonight the Lord, you know, it's interesting because when God tells me what he wants me to speak on, I always, it's interesting because I know I'm speaking their mind as a spirit, what the Holy Spirit wants. I just don't know how we're going to derive how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I'm realizing one of the reasons why people <clears throat> don't receive things from God is because of all the things that we're saying. And see, we, what we don't recognize is we're a hodgepodge of a lot of things we've heard and experienced in church. And we don't realize that maybe subconsciously, and a lot of times consciously, we got isms and schisms mm -hmm. because of it, because of some of the things that we've all been talking about. And because of it, that gives you a disdain or you a dislike or you get a, you know you get a disassociation about certain things. What hurts people about what God wants to talk about, God wants to talk about physical healing tonight and receiving physical healing. And uh, whether if this is the first time you've ever uh, watched or listened to the program or not, you always, it's a statement I make. And I say, regardless of the denomination that you go to or your non-denominational church, virtually every Sunday, I say Sunday, some folks have, have meetings on Saturday, but they have a sick and shut-in list. Mm -hmm. And folks say, pray for our sick and shut-in. And I know that this is for folks been on a sick and <laughs> shut-in list in 10, 15 years. And uh, some are so sick they can't come to church. Now, <clears throat> if you don't believe that God healed the sick, why do you have a sick and shut-in list to pray for? Is it just tradition? Is it just ritual form and ceremony? Or do you truly believe that God will heal? And I don't want this thing where if it's his will, it's always God's will to heal people. Sometimes folk don't get healed for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> First of all, they don't believe because you ain't preaching and teaching healing. Some folk have, have a rose been taught, God doesn't heal today. Uh, they've been taught this, this lie when the apostles died, healing died. Yet, if they studied church history, not their denomination, not their church, not their conference, not their movement, but if you go back and check church history, you will find out that even, I'm going to say, if we can probably find the documents. Because the Dark Ages was about Europe. My ancestors primarily are not from Europe. I know I'm part white. And maybe a little Native American. But I'm, I'm primarily African. <clears throat> Africans knew who Yahweh, Jehovah was during the Old Testament time. It's, it is a lie of the devil that Africans were introduced to Christ through white missionaries. That's not true. That's not true. The majority of the people spoken of in the Old Testament were dark-skinned people. And when you go back and you look at those countries, go back and look at the different countries. Even the unit, and remember, Jesus had just died. And what was he reading? He was reading the scripture. The scripture was the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah it was the Ethiopian doing reading Hebrew. Right. So he had to know something about the Hebrew God. Yeah. And we're talking about Ethiopia. That's Africa. So a lot of times, again, you can't see the forest for the trees, and there's been a lot of misdirection. It's a lie to say that Christianity is a white man's religion. That's a lie. Hebrews were not Caucasian. Anybody who knows the table of nations, anybody who studied, has studied archaeology, history, know that 
the Hebrews were originally a racial group. And as you read in the Old Testament and the New, you see these other different people coming into the religion of the Hebrews. And then they became so-called Jewish. And see, this is this is really a truth that's been buried. So what's going on is the first history that's been taught was the lie. We really shouldn't be speaking of it in revisionist terms. It's people get angry about it, but it's the truth. Folk were lied to. Christianity was, was perverted and twisted. Because I believe God was healing even during the Dark Ages. Because the Dark Ages was talking about Europe. The world was more than Europe. So stop and think about that. Let's have a say a more. <coughs> Let's stop and calmly think about it. That's what, that's what say law means. So what I want you to understand is if you go back and you check, you find out that Martin Luther had miracles. Then you had a bunch of people, even uh, in Africa, different parts of Europe, throughout the ages, have had miracles. So it's a lie, and you got different denominations. I've told I've told the story of the guy I grew up with, and I'm gonna give his name, Bo Robinson, from my hometown of Tarboro, North Carolina. I got to talking to him and said, you never know how God does a thing. I got to talk to him about John and Charles Wesley and the miracles they had. And I said, Bo, they're Methodists. He looked at me and said, Larry, I was, I was raised in a Methodist church. I never heard that before. Mm -hmm. See, God knew what he was doing by having me talk about John and Charles Wesley. He was from that denomination. Didn't know it. And they, and they had miracles. So the whole thing about it is, it's always been available for the church. But guess what? If I smoke a pack of cigarettes a day, frequent the ABC store all the time, never take time to spend time with God. Now, no, I don't think you know too much is going to happen because I'm not pursuing it. I'm not renewing my mind in the Word. The Bible says. Let me, let me read this. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Isaiah 53. <clears throat> now, the King James Version says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord <coughs> been revealed? <coughs> Boy, that devil fights me every time I try to do this now. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. Who have believed, trusted in, relied upon, and clung to our message, that which was revealed to us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been disclosed? For the servant of God grew up before him as a tender plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness, royal, kingly, pomp, pomp and circumstance, that we should look on him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected and forsaken by men. A man of sorrows and pains and acquainted with grief and sickness. And like one from whom men hide their faces when he was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. That's the reason why you get so much persecution. Mm -hmm. if you pray for the sick and cast out devils. <clears throat> they have rejected Jesus. Truly have borne our great sicknesses, weaknesses and distresses and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly but to say ignorantly, considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted of God as with leprosy. Listen to the fifth verse. Boy, I'm feeling the unction on my neck now talking about it. But it was wounded for our transgressions, his brute for our, our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement need to be up to obtain peace, well being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed. <coughs> and made whole. <coughs> so, here's the thing. Jesus. 
<coughs> excuse me, Jesus, he bore everything. Boy, the unction is getting on me stronger. Jesus. God wants to send healing to you. Now, really, my mind got on the person I grew up with. I believe she had a stroke. But in spite of what's happened to her, I see on Facebook where she's, uh, praise God, she's thankful to be alive. And she sees him. And I sent her an inbox message that I would be on the internet tonight. So she got the link. But God brought her before me. I've been praying for her for some time. But the Lord brought her before me. And that's why I'm where I am tonight. I'm going to give you just a few scriptures. I got a bunch of them, though, really. In fact, I think I'm going to have my son read it. I won't have to worry about this cult. Read, at least read that, that first page. Yeah, you know, all of that page. James 5, <coughs> James 5 and 15 it says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. <coughs> uh, Mark 10 and 27, it said, uh, And Jesus looking upon him said, With men it is impossible, but with, but not with God, for all things, for with God all things are possible. James 5 and 14, Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. Matthew 18 and 19, again I say unto you that if, any, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. First Peter 2 and 24, uh, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Uh, 3 John 1 and 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Uh, Philippians 4 and 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. James 5 and 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Oh, one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see what? No, that's good right now. <coughs> um, you have to believe the report of the Lord. Now, Isaiah 53 and 1. Now, I read the first five verses from that five version. Heard my son read, I think, 53 and 5 mm -hmm. from the King James Version. Whose report are you going to believe? And I believe that, that God started us in the way that he did because you can have stuff in your head, and really in your heart, that stops God from bringing you healing because you don't want to have this association with all this other stuff. See, see it's amazing to me how God, you know, God gives you a general thing, then he, but he brings it all in the plate. Mm -hmm. So what you got to do, you have to discard all that other stuff. Because that can hinder you from getting your blessing. We, you know, I've, I, I've ministered to a lot of people over the last, really about 38 years. And um, we've had people say, well, I want you, you can pray for them, but I don't want to fall out. Why are you going to tell God what to do? Isn't that arrogant? It's ignorant, but it's arrogant. They're so proud, they don't want to fall out. You know, um, don't worry about what God, how, you know, I tell people, stop trying to tell God how to bring your blessing. 
Let God bring it the way he wants to bring it. And we always don't always like the methodology which he does it, but, it, but he's God. And remember, he's sovereign, he's supreme, and he brings it the way that he wants to do it. And what you got to do, you got to humble yourself. After all, only God can heal. I thank God for medicine, but medicine does not necessarily heal. God put a healing mechanism in our bodies. He gets thrown off because of disease and infirmity, or, or sometimes trauma that comes to the body. And the doctors sometimes can stabilize your body and, and give you medicines. And you know, but the thing about it is, is if the healing factor that God put in you, if it doesn't work in unison with that medicine, medicine gonna do you no good. it's not going to do you any good. So you must understand that God is the author of healing. And that what happens is there comes a time when medicine won't do so much. So, but guess what? And you know, I'm, I'm going to tell this. <clears throat> I'm going to tell this testimony. I've told it before, but the Lord brought it back because God's trying to bring miracles to people. What you got to do is you got to reach out to the spirit realm. Now, my wife and I prayed for, prayed for somebody in our hometown, Janice Wooten Walston, and she had cancer. And when her, and when her husband, Gary, told me at the time, it, it, it just stunned me. Because a lot of times folks have a sickness and you can't always tell it. Mm -hmm. You know, at least it wasn't at a stage where she looked bad. Mm -hmm. um, but she'd gone to the doctor and she knew she had cancer. And I was led by the Spirit. What I did was they had a downstairs closet. And so I prayed over her clothes downstairs and her shoes. And a few days later, we went back. And I sat down with both of them and told them that God used me to pray for the sick. And uh, she said, well, I believe God will heal me. So we laid hands on and prayed for them. And so, uh, power of God healed him. There was no doubt about it that the power of God healed him. And so, uh, a few days later, my wife went to the grocery store. And she came back. She ran. She said, I ran into Janice. And Janice said, I went to the doctor. The doctor said, all oh, traces of cancer are gone. You know, so, um, now that was really about 35 years ago. Um, we will be married this coming Monday, 27, 35 years. So it was in the first year, I believe, we were married. So let's say 34 years in a piece. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this happened. Um, and so God wants to bring a miracle. Cancer means nothing to God. Stroke means nothing to God. But what it is, you got to believe him and what his word says. Now, Jesus is the healer. I'm not the healer. That's why I, I, I hate to talk about faith healers. Mm -hmm. That's why I fuss about that term. That's why I've gotten, all, gotten in front of this camera and I told people, Benny Hinn is not a faith healer. Mark Cirillo is not a faith healer. Pastor Chris is not a faith healer. Anybody who prays for the sick is not a faith healer. Jesus is the healer. Now, yes, it does say in Hebrews, uh, that without faith it is impossible to please it. And yes, it takes faith to be healed. But do, do, do people call Jesus a faith healer? I think not. Some folks will want to call him a mystic. Yeah. You know? Go over that. Uh, uh, whole another can of wine. Right. But what I would tell people is, what you need to do is you need to go to the four Gospels and read them and get reacquainted with the man called Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus the Christos to Christ. Jesus is still a healer. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus never changed. And he did his job. He went to Calvary. He shed his blood. The Father rose him from the dead on the third day like he said. The power of the resurrection. 
when one is baptized in the Holy Spirit, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in our mortal bodies. But it's still that same Jesus who brings healing and restoration. And what I want you to understand is this. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, how can you not believe that Jesus died and suffered and took those 39 stripes on his back for the healing of your body? <coughs> Why would it be hard for Jesus to heal your body if he can save your sin sick soul? Again, this faulty logic that people have. Just because your church doesn't teach and preach healing doesn't mean it's not true. I just read what's in your Bible. And don't tell me it's not in your Bible because it is. Don't let the teachings of man cause you to miss out on your miracle. And no, I don't have to physically be where you are. Because if you're listening or watching this broadcast, regardless of what time, whether you're in real time or the archive, Jesus is right there with you. God the Father is right there with you. Remember, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient, so it makes no difference about what time it is. God just may not have manifested himself to you. Or at the same time, you may be feeling the presence in your room or wherever you are right now while you're in contact with this broadcast. What you need to do is <clears throat> tell Jesus, I believe your word. And I believe that you are still the healer. Because Jesus is the healer. All we do is pray the prayer of faith. Matthew 18, 19. If any rather or shmara descended or so. Ishro da Sandra O Spirit Alamanaro de Sira da Sande. Rosso Shera de Sindra O Spirit Arada. Rada Ishmere da Sando Shera da Radasa. Rosso Shera de Sindra O Spirit Andra Basodo. Rodo O Shera da Sa Terabra da Sando Shi. Reso Shemara de Sandra Omanindriada Basande. Jesus is untangling people's minds. You heard some things tonight that you know that made you think because you've had a lot of different thoughts. You wonder why? Why are they talking about the things that they are? Because God wants your mind straightened out. The Bible says, "Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus." What was that to do the will of the Father? Many of you are hungry and want to serve God, but you're not getting good preaching and teaching. You're not under good leadership. <clears throat> And because you're not, it's caused you to go astray. But God, all God cares about is sincerity. And because of the sincerity of God, because see, God's not changed not. It's because of his righteousness, not ours. It's because of his righteousness that he will touch you tonight or day. You know, whenever you're looking at this or listening to this. God wants to do a miracle for you. I've seen all kinds of miracles. I've seen cataracts literally melt. I've seen arthritic limbs shrink. Yeah, I, I've seen them shrink. Yeah, I, I've actually just grabbed somebody around there, swung arthritic limbs, and they deflate like a balloon. The power of God. Jesus said, all good, all perfect gifts come from the Father. So if you'll just reach out to the Father right now, and because of his son's work on Calvary, that coming of the second Adam, to bring us back into alignment and restoration with God the Father. If you will believe on his name, you will be made every whit whole. He asked the man in the pool, he said, Wilt thou be made whole? And the man said, I have no one to put me in the water. And he'd been sitting for 38 years. So I don't know how long you've been waiting. But Jesus spoke the word 
But see, Jesus asked him, will you be made whole? So God is asking you the same thing. Jesus asked you the same thing tonight. Will you be made whole? See, it's up to you. Either you're going to stay in that religion and tradition and you're worried about being associated with certain folk or you, you be concerned with being associated with Jesus. <coughs> if you're willing to associate with him, if you're willing to associate with his father, then you will be made whole. So if you'll just believe on him, you'll get your miracle tonight. And if you're being tormented or bothered in the spiritual warfare, God will deliver you from that too. We'll be praying about that tonight as well. Whatever is bothering you. We're believing that God is going to fix that right now. We're going to start prayer right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your direction, Lord, and the leading of your spirit. I thank you, Lord, how you started the conversation tonight. For you knew, Lord, that somebody would be watching or listening, and they had a lot of thoughts, Lord, about certain associations, Lord, and what they are to do because they'll say, well, I wasn't raised that way and, and I, I don't know about that. But the thing about it is, Lord, is we just want to associate with you. For you are right. You're always right. For it is not the doctrines of man, it is not the tradition of man. This is not the work of a man, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus, I come against every principality, every power, every rule of darkness, every wicked spirit in high places. I curse sickness, disease, and infirmity. I bind every sickness, every disease, and every infirmity. I bind Osha, Rese, Ishma, Rondo, Ishte, Roso, Ishma, Bando, Eshe, Roso, Ishma, Bande, Oshe, Rondo, Ishma, Beso, Rase, Ando, Ishma, Rondo, Rase, Ishma, Rondo, Ishma, Bando, Eshe, Roso, Ishma, Rasa, Espe, Roso, Ishma, Bando, Eshe, Roso, Roso, Ishma, Bande, Eshe, Roso, Ishma, Esha, Roso, Bande. Father, purge every home of every infirmity spirit. I curse cancer. I bind Esha, Radasato, Radasendrodose, Roso, Eshmi, Radasande. I rebuke strokes. I rebuke aneurysms. Roso, Sherry, the Sindhi. Ready me under Oshimara, the Sandra Ospara, the Sunday. I rebuke Eshmara, the Alaba, nerve damage. Roso, Ishra, Sandra Oshimara, the La. I rebuke reflux. Esha, I don't know, so no acid reflux. Roso, Sherry, the Alaba, Sandra Oshimara, the La. Father, I bind every spirit, Lord, that tries to bring chest pain. Eshma Rodosondo, Sherry Nadaba Sunday. Rosso, Eshe Rodosso. Rolo, Sherry Nadaba Sunday. Eshma Rodala. Father, I bind heart disease. Rero Shondo, Rero Shondo. Eshe Rodosira Nadaba Sunday. Resa Toro Basando Dosso. Eshma Rodaba Sunday. Father, I bind Rodosho Rodaba Sunday. About blood diseases, Lord. I command normalcy in blood in Jesus' name. Rosi Shandra O Spirit Sunday. Father, I buy arthritis, bursitis, gout, rheumatism, regular arthritis, Rosia T about our door. Rosi Shimara de Sindrodo. Roda Asa Tel Banero da Sondra da. Rosso Shira de Sindra O Speed. Rada Ashmara de Sondo Shira Nada Basande. I command the deaf spirits to move in Jesus' name. Rishimara do Sira da Sindra Ushbi. Radabayana Basandra do Basada. I curse glaucoma. 
Reshimarana, and pressure in the eyes. We saw Ishmirana Basande, Rana Beyondo Ishmirana Basande, Rana Basondo Ishmirana Baso, Roso Isha, Rana Beyondo Rabasande. I command nerves in the eyes regenerate. Isha Rana Sindhu Rosia, Roso Isha Rana Sindhu Di, Rasa Ishmirana Basande, Ishmirana Basande. Father, I command the lenses, Lord, to reshape and reform. Ishmirana Basande. I command those hardened lens. To loosen, I command them to soften, issue a Sunday, and become more pliable, more bendable in the eye socket. Ishme, Rosso, Ishrena Badora da Sunday, Reshinero do Sira da Sando, Reandro Sira de Sindro do Se, Rosso, Ishrena da Basande, Rana Beandro O Spirana da Basande. Father, I bind every witch, wizard, soothsayer, astrologer. I bind every issue a Sando, Ishra da da. Father, I bind every Ishmael Sandro. I bind every one also Ishmael on a Sunday. Ishmael on a Sunday. Father, I bind every one Lord that is Ishmael on a Sunday. Rosso Ishmael the Sindro will speak. Rosso Ishmael on a Sunday. Rada Basando Ishmael the Sindro. Father, I bind every one also. Yeso Rada Ishmael the Sindro. Rosso Rada Ishmael on a Sunday. Rasi Rando Ishmael on a Rosso Ishmael the Basando Ishmael the Ira Dasa. Rosso Ishmael on a Basande. Father, as I prayed this morning, Lord, sitting by the computer, Lord, I pray that, that manifestation take place now. I command every edifice, Asso, Riandro Osiri de Surada, Rosso Ishira de Sendrode, Ro Ishmari de Sendrodo, Rodo Oshira de Alaba Sandrodo, Ishira de Alaba Alaba Sundo, Rodo Oshira de Sendro Oshira, Rodo Ashamari de Sundo Oshi, Rodo Oshira de Sandroda, Ishmari de Alaba Sande, In Ishira de Osiri de Sendrodo, Rodo Oshira de Alaba Sande, Rosso is sharing the Sindhuda. Rosso is sharing the Sindhu Isla. Rodo is sharing the Sandu Oshirade. Rodo is sharing the Sandu Oshirada. Rodo is sharing the Sindhu Oshiradaba. Rodo is sharing the Sandu Oshiradaba. Rodo is sharing the Sindhu Oshirada. Rodo is sharing the Sandu Oshirada. Rodo is sharing the Sandu Oshirada. Rodo is sharing the Sandu Oshiradaba. A band that on the issue of the Sindhu Oshirada. Rodo Shurada and the Ishun de Ishma, Rodo Shurada Sando Shurada, Rodo Bedana Basondo Shurada Basande. Father, let a healing take place in Jesus' name. Father, I commend the effects of the stroke mode to reverse. Let the Ishim and Death smile at the Sindhu Shurada, Yenro Smile at the Basando. Father, let the doctors be amazed, Lord. Ishim and Descend to Oshira, Descend to Oshurada, Rodo Oshimara Descend to Oshurada. Father, let every stroke victim be made completely whole and entire, lacking nothing. Rasa Shimari de Sindra Oshi. Rosso Ishmari de Sindra. Rosso Shimani Radara Basandra de. Ishma Radasa Basumari de Sindra Oshmi Radha. Rosso Shimari de Sindra Oshi Radara Basar. Rosso Shimani de Sindra Oshi Radha. Rose Shimera de Sindu Osha. Rhoda Varada Basando Shira de Basande. Rhoda Shira de Sindu Osma. Rhoda Varada Basando Shira de Basande. And Lord, we just break those devils, Lord, that have been trying to hold back. Asha, Rada Eshima, Rasa, Rhoda Oshe, Rosso, Ishmara de Sande. Rada Meandro Oshira de Basande. Rosso Ishmara de Sindu Ospa. Roba de Sindo Oshira de Sandudo. Rodo Oshimara de Sandu Oshirada. Roba de Neve Sandu Oshirada. And Father, I pray about that person right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we just bind that spirit, Lord, to cause them to be jumpy. We just bind that spirit, Lord, to cause them to be angry. And we just bind that spirit, Lord. We say, Peace be still. Peace be still. Father, peace. Ishmael Adaba, be still. Ishmael the Sindra Oshiradasa, Rosso Ishmael Adaba Sande, and Lord let Ishara da Sande, Rosso Ishmael the Sindra Ospa, Robert Adaba Sando, Sherid Adaba Sande, Rodo Sherid the Sandra Ospira Adaba Sande. 
Father, send a calm, a soothing, and a healing in Jesus' name. Father, let peace, tranquility reign supreme. I just rebuke all the attacks and plots of the enemy. We just rebuke the wicked one. Father, let us say, Ishmael, let us say, Roso, Sherry, and Sindra. Father, we speak to the heavenlies, and we just say, Ishmael, and Sandra, Lord of Apple, Roso, Sherry, and Sandra. Jesus said, Peace, be still. Jesus said, Peace, be still. Roso, Shemara, and Sandra, O Spear, Roso, Shemara, and Sandra. Roll about our Sandra, O Spear, out of a Sunday. Lord, we bind those, Lord, that call on other gods, that burn incense at different altars. Father, we bind those in the groves and in the high places. We rebuke and bind them in Jesus' name. Father, send the angels right outside tomorrow this Sunday. Rosa Eshmerid out of a Sandro Shema. Rodo share the Sandro O Spirit out. Rodo by out of a Sandro share the Sunday. Rosa Eshmerid the Sunday. Rodo by out of a Sandro share it out of a Sunday. Rosa Eshmerid the Sunday do. Rodo by Sandro share the Sunday. Rodo by Sandro O share out of a Sunday. Father, manifest yourself. Rada Basondo Ish Mera de Sindra Oshi. Rola Beandra Oshira da Sandra de So. Rola Beandra Oshira de Sindra do. Rodo Oshira da Sandra Oshma. Roba out of a Sando Shira out of a Sande. Father Rade Shondra Oshira de Sindhi. Father Rada Sata Mara Sindra Oshira da. Rodo Oshira de Sindo Era da Sa. Rodo Oshira de Sindo Oshira da. Robert out of a Sunday. Father, keep us 20 steps ahead of the enemy. Like, not 10, Lord. Keep us 20 steps ahead of the enemy. Robert Ishmael, the Sandra Oshira, the Sandra Day. Robert out of a Sandra Oshira, the Sandra Day. Robert out of a Sunday. Father, let the enemy be confused and confounded. Lord, you said you would mock them in the calamity and laugh at them in derision. Father, let the, let the derision run rampant. Let them be totally confused and confounded. Lord, they think themselves to be wise, Lord, and they are. They're otherwise. It's not what they think. Father, I pray you continue to prove yourself. Move in the affairs of man, Lord, the way that nobody but God can. Father, close doors that no man can open, and open doors that no man can close. Lord, we believe you said it's impossible. For you said, is anything too hard for God? Bisha, Rodo Ishmael de Sandra de. Rosa Ishmael de Sandra Ostrada, Ishmael de Sandra Ospa. Father said, Heavenly ideas. The Bible says, Witty inventions. Lord, when they said, Shemar de Sandra Oshira de Serida, Rosa Ishmael de Sandra Oshira, Rosa Tabasondo Sherida de Basandra de. Roso share the Sandra O spot. Lord, let everything work out according to your will. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. We praise and honor and glory, Lord, for every miracle. We thank you, Lord, for every person, Lord, that's coming to the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for those who have been revived, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for making the crooked places straight. We thank you for lighting our paths, Lord. Continue to lead and guide us into all truth, Lord. We thank you for the dreams. We thank you for the visions, Lord. But we thank you for the interpretation of the dreams. We thank you, Lord, for the interpretation of the visions. We thank you, Lord, that you speak to men the way you want to. And help us, Lord, to be ever patient, Lord, and ever willing to wait on you that we, before we get to, to move, Lord. Help us to wait on you to get the right answer. That we will know what to do. Let our enemy be confounded, Lord, that after every plot and scheme they go through, that they still cannot outflank you. Father, help us with our say Shema. Roso Sherry the Serida. Ishmira Spandra O Sherida. Roso Sherry the Sindra Ospa. 
Radabada Basor da Sando Shirid Arada, Rose Shimerida Sandrade, Rodo O Shirid Sindra O Shirid Arabasande. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you, Lord, the Ishmarid Arabasande, Lord. Then we give the word, Lord, <coughs> with signs following. Lord, Rada Ashmar and Sindra O Shirid Ara, Rodo O Shirid Arabasande Dosha, Rose Shimera de Sindra Osha. Robert and Sandra O'Shea and Arabasande. Father, we ask for interpretation, dreams, and visions. Father, help us out of a sword and Sandra. Speak to us, Lord, that we might understand, Lord, what the symbology is, Lord, <clears throat> what the names mean. Ishmael, the Sarah, the Sandra O'Shea and Arabasande. Roba, Satish, Maradondo. Rose, Ishmael, the Sandra O'Shea and Roba de de Masando, Ishmara de Sandrade. Father, let Radasa Ishmara de Sindra Osha. Father, help, help us, Lord, that we might understand what you are saying to us, Lord. For we are the church. Father, continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, raise Shira de Sira de Sindra Oshma. We give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, we just plead the blood on all our lives and our families. We just plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray that the Sarah that Sandra Osha, Rose she married the Sandra Ospa, Robada sa es married at the Pasande. Lord, we have told she married the Sandra. Rose she married the Sandra da. Rose Shandra O Spirit under the Sirid Asara the Sandra Ospo. Rose Shmira the Sandra Oshua. Rose Shmira the Sandra Oshirid Arabasande. Father, we just give you praise, and honor, and glory. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for each Esha, Rasa, Eshmira the Sandra Do. Ro Eshmira the Sandra Oshmira Arabasande. Father, I pray that email, Lord, continue to haunt them, Lord. Let I pray that the Spirit, the anointing double. I pray, Lord, that the anointing double in Jesus' name. Father, I say, Ishmeri the Sindra Oshma. Rose, Ishmeri the Abbasandra Oshira. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, for Saturday. Lord, let Ishmeri the Sandra Oshma. Let the Holy Spirit descend and just stay. Ishmeri the Sindra Rose Sherry the Sindrada, Robada Sandra O Sherida, Rose de Sandra O Spirida. O Shimmer the Sindra Sandra.
A lot of you feel the healing power of God in your body right now. Uh, for some of you, I'm sure it's a new experience. But rest assured, it's just as easy for God to heal. Cancer is a headache. Stroke is a headache. Heart attack like it's a headache. And as usual, you know, we have our say by moment mm -hmm. where we will usually pass our out and pray. But, uh, you know, did anybody uh, say anything? I guess, like in particular, Jay, did you say anything? Uh, uh, I was praying, like, did I get anything? Yeah. All right, we're going to sit here and wrap with the beef. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, something to say afterwards? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
about the we go ahead and close on that? Yeah, yeah. So I uh, want you to uh, concentrate on that feeling that you feel or ask power of the Holy Spirit and God's healing power. And um, God will heal you. Now, some of y'all, you may get all of it tonight or today, whenever you're looking at it. Uh, or listening. <coughs> and some of it will be gradual. But you will be healed, and uh, you'll be able to tell that you're able to do things you couldn't do before. So look for it, and thank God for it. Go to, go to bed tonight. Thank you for God for your miracle. And we'll see you Sunday.